I can handle the 25 years, and I've heard a lot of guys say that, but I can't handle the rest of my life on parole. Parole isn't easy. Parole is hard to do. Superintendent, do you think that's true? Well, I guess he's the authority there. Uh, I, I haven't heard too many cases of uh, people in prison turning down parole, but I guess I stand to be corrected. Let's talk to Steve, who's calling from Ontario. Hi, Steve. Hi, Jane. How you doing? Good. We're talking about the faint hope clause. Yeah, well, I, I think all your viewers would probably agree that first-degree murder is one of the most heinous crimes that there is. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, though, I would have to say that your guest, Rick Atkinson, the inmate, Yep. Um, he's really, he knows what he's talking about because he understands the system. He's been there. Yep. And uh, he knows the kind of people that get out. And they wouldn't let these people out if they were unacceptable to the public. Okay? Well, I That's guess it depends on how well you trust the parole boards. If you remember what, what Mr. Atkinson was saying, mm -hmm. he explained it in pretty good detail. Yep. Whereas the constable there, I mean, nothing against him, but... You know, he's quite reactionary. He's more or less doing what his constituency, the, the voters or whatever, would think would be the, the proper way for him to react. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't mean to put either guest down, but it seems to me as if uh, Mr. Atkinson is fairly well versed. And, uh, you know, rather than being a reactionary person, he's quite level-headed about it. Okay, well, Steve, we all have, you know, our react in the way that we do, and he's a superintendent, and he doesn't get voted in, by the way. Let's talk to uh, Mona, who's calling from Ontario. Hi, Mona. Hi. Uh, this is a really touchy topic for me. I live in Saint. I used to live in Saint Catharines, mm -hmm. and we lived in fear when Kristen French went missing, and then she was finally found out. Our tax dollars built him a special little cell. Yeah. Now life is life and I think he should be slowly gassed and I know it's this is not about you know the death penalty and whatnot mm -hmm. but is he going to be able to get, a, get out on the, on the St. Hope clause? Like, well, well let's la ask the police superintendent I mean we're talking about Bernardo here and this is what people worry about with the existence of the faint hope clause that there might be some way for him to get out I think most people would say not a chance well and most people would be wrong because 15 years from now he can make application and uh, 15 years from now, the passions will have died significantly in Ontario there. And what's going to happen is he will be just as eligible as the next guy. And we experienced that just recently ourselves. Uh, 16, 17 years ago, we had a police officer gunned down who responded to a bank robbery, Keith Harrison. Mm -hmm. uh, very emotional issue at the time, not just for the police, but in the community. Uh, one of the uh, perpetrators, the, guy, the Nichols that uh, shot him, He's uh, drinking coffee in Vancouver now, another uh, lucky recipient of the Faint Hope, uh, Hope Clause. And I'd like to address also some of the comments made by the previous caller. Okay. I would love to believe that people that go out on parole, uh, the parole board knows best, the people in the prison system know best, and those guys that get out on parole don't do anything wrong. The fact is, that's just not right. I mean, here in Calgary, and you talk to any police department, anyhow, we're just investigating a complaint now where we've made an arrest for two people out on parole, statutory release, have uh, broke into a house, uh, sexually assaulted an 87-year-old woman, and uh, fortunately, we arrested them. Uh, parole violators are a fact of life. They're out on parole. Some of them don't real fend. A lot of them do. So well, I don't think people should hide in the cocoon that uh, they think that uh, once you're out on parole, you're, you're, you're totally reformed and you don't commit crimes again, because that's just Well, I think true. that, you know, in some ways, we need to be having the broader debate in Canada about what we expect the prison system to do then. I mean, we know it doesn't work as a deterrent. None of these sentences seem to work as a deterrent. And so if we're, if we're now moving into the mode of punishment, then I think your, the sentences that you hand out and your eligibility for parole would be, the rules would be completely different from the way they are now. Because because even if you look at Section 745 and the rules under which someone can uh, uh, be eligible for parole, a lot of it has to do with their behavior in prison. And I have no doubt that someone like Paul Bernardo could, if he wanted to be, be an absolutely ideal prisoner. I mean, this could be, he could be Mr. Charming the whole time he's in there, and that's going to give him a whole bunch of and points towards getting out. My experience with sexual offenders are generally model prisoners. That's right. But uh, Christian French's parents and uh, Leslie Mahaffey's parents, they're not going to give up. 
But that's not right. And Why does it have to be an individual who does that? Why can't we have the laws that protect them so they don't have to be the ones in fighting in people's faces on talk shows because or whatever, trying to get people to? You're painting everybody with the same brush, and and all sentences. But in then Canada what happens to someone who gets killed who doesn't have someone who can be an activist who has doesn't have someone who's strong enough to face the cameras and and say what's and then wrong? Activists like Miss Boyd can 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 take up their plate and fight okay. for them. Jane, and that's what activists do.